We've had an exciting last two weeks, uh, lots of beautiful pastoral ministry going on in the form of health ministry, training, spiritual encouragement, and counsel. And this morning, we want to take a, a little look back. I want to tell you what my hope is, because the right arm of the gospel will be the finishing arm. We will be shut out of most places of communication before Jesus returns, but we won't be shut out of pe people's homes who are sick when we can help them and they've learned to trust us. And that's where we're headed. And so training everybody from the young to the middle aged to the old is our goal. We are looking for a encounter with our neighbors that's based on the healing ministry of Jesus. There's so much that there is to learn and so much that there is to give. Uh, the two weeks that people spent here is powerful, but almost a drop in the bucket. But uh, the 100 plus volunteers and the, uh, those involved in the immersion program and the trainees, I want us to kind of see where we've been and point forward to our next immersion program, which if you're watching online or listening here this morning, uh, these dates are not rock solid, but they are probably pretty close, and that'll be October 19 to November 4. So if you know someone who needs a new start, or you would like a new start, or you would like to train for uh, this very powerful ministry, it'll be the last two weeks of October and the first few days of November. So let's pray, then we'll have a little uh, introduction to who's here, have a few pictures for you this morning, a little recap of where we've been. And I'm going to invite Rob Rice to have our opening prayer for us. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for the healing touch of Jesus Christ that could inspire hope and give an example for others to follow, Lord. And I believe that you have done that even here and now. In this age, be with us as we meditate on your kindness, your glory, and your, your healing touch. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Rob, give us an introduction of who's joined us. You are one of the co-leaders of this. Uh, let us know who we're talking with this morning. We have Dr. John Kelly. Dr. Kelly, he started this immersion program. It was his vision, wanting to bring the health back into the church in a very deep way. And I believe he succeeded in that. And I thank Pastor Kelly and his team for embracing that. I was helping Pastor... Michael Kusarawana, he was the director of the program. He is actually teaching the youth right now, otherwise he'd be up here with us. And I was his kind of right-hand man for the program. Jim Nival, he is one of the guests that went through. He would love to share his testimony and Karen Robinson as well. And then we have the blessing of having Vicki here. She went through the program as a trainee and then she got to embrace her skills at another level by being one of the therapists and examples for the, for the new trainees that came to this program. All right, so help us understand what we need to know at the end of this. On Thursday, everybody was breathing a little sigh of relief, as much of a blessing as it was. The schedule was intense, the learning was wonderful, but you can't sustain that on and on. So um, the tremendous amount of fellowship grew out of this, which uh, we shouldn't be surprised about, but what else came out of this experience? Yeah, I... I think there's beautiful testimonies from the guests. Uh, we did have one guest that didn't belong to this fold, and her expression, and, and she was the one who was, showed the most emotion, was the emotion of being touched literally and prayed for by people in a community that she had never felt before. And she was emotional about that. So I praise the Lord that we could be the hands of Jesus Christ and the feet of Jesus Christ and have that healing touch for her. So you're talking about a sense of belonging and connection with God there. Amen. That she had not experienced on such a level. And it was literally through the church members, the volunteers here, from Andrews and from everywhere else that came from the members, from the medical staff, and probably from her fellow guests as well. Well, maybe before we see the miraculous healings of Jesus at the end of the age through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we're going to see miracles like that a whole lot more. Amen. And I would like to share one. Uh, before we move on, that's, there's someone who couldn't be here today, and this is a good story. They didn't think that they could go on the trip that they're going on this weekend because they were in so much pain. Now, we're going to record their story so you can see it more later, but they were living in a pain 7 out of 10. They were actually going to be a volunteer, but they said, I can't do this, so they chose to become a guest. After 10 days, they left with 0 out of 10 pain. 
And they're now going to do something in honor of their parents that they thought they would not be able so to do. So this very Sabbath, while we're sitting here, somebody who had given up hope has not only hope but no pain and is enjoying honoring their parents and worshiping this morning somewhere else. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, take us on a journey here. I see you have some guests and some slides and, of course, our program medical director. Sure. What are we going to do? Uh, uh, let's, have, let's go through a few slides and we'll transition back. Is there someone that can advance well, those for I think forms? we'll have to depend on them for that up there. All right. So here we have the meals and the preparation. Now, we treated people with three major things. Well, more than that, but water, burnt wood, and good food. So besides that, prayer makes a huge difference. We know that. That's what gives the power to the agencies. But you can see they're giving a lot of food here. We probably had some meals they were preparing for 60 people. The breakfast always had your choice of peanut butter or almond butter. And we'll keep going here. We had some happy volunteers in the kitchen. And in the background, you see Sally Kelly. This is the doctor's wife. She was doing all sorts of beautiful things in the kitchen. <laughs> Besides having happy spirits, we had happy food. <laughs> and happy dishwashers, Amen. we hope. So every day, there's, there's dozens, 100 plus meals being made out of this kitchen. In total, there was probably a thousand meals prepared over the last two weeks. That's a lot of food. And every time I got to share, and it was exceptionally good and wonderfully presented. Amen. And here's a little taste of the presentation. And it was as delicious as it looks. <laughs> and this was our celebration meal. There weren't a lot of desserts as the meals were therapeutic, but we did celebrate. God gives a, an, a huge variety of good things. So there's a season for everything, even a little vegan ice cream. Amen. So we utilize the fellowship hall, not just as fellowship hall, but it's an educational center for everyone who came. We have a mix of guests. Some of them you see here on the stage, by the way. The Grimms, they were a little shy to come up here, but they said anyone who wants to talk to them, Karen and Kevin, they will be happy to share their experience. If you want to know what they experienced, and they do have good testimonies, please go find them. And here's some of our trainees, our volunteers. And Dr. Kelly gave a lot of incredible lectures, transformative in the information. Now, Ellen White says, education, education, education. The only hope of better things is education. And so we educate and we also join people. Andrews University, you know, they couldn't go on a mission trip this year because of the borders were closed because of COVID-19. Somehow they had restrictions. Guess where they went for their mission trip? They Village went Church. They crossed the street to Village Church and they came here to help out the, tra the trainees and the guests that were coming. So Melanie Quinn was the lead in, uh, kind of the lead nurse for the program. The students came over and they did their, their missionary work. And what a great thing for them to uh, get this exposure to this really up-and-coming form of medicine. I mean, to be very frank, it's been forgotten for a number of years, but it's right on the cutting edge. Again, Dr. John, you want to make an observation about that? Or? Well, that's, yes. I think that uh, not only uh, is it cutting edge, it's uh, been for the, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the last five years, the fastest growing medical professional society has been the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, membership doubling every year for a number of years. So yes, it is on the, but it's, it's like so many things that, that Christ and the Bible have shown us. There, it's going back to the future. <laughs> it's, it's, it's we old, shouldn't be surprised. Old as the hills and, and as relevant as, as any modern medical technique. But now we can explain it. And since empirical science has become so important in the last so many years, we can explain so much of it, which all of a sudden it looks like we don't have to be faith-based. Yes, our... uh, which is a blessing and, uh, and, and also a challenge. But yes, if, along those lines, the thing that I was sharing with the, uh, the participants and trainees is that with the new science of epigenetics, which has to do with the gene switches and, and knowing you know, our cells have, every cell in our body has the complete human genome you know, so we have genes for the liver in our ear, but the switches are what makes the difference. And the, and the food diet has been shown to be the most 
powerful change agent for changing your gene expression. So yeah, we, we understand so much. To me, it's just absolutely beautiful and compelling. I mean, we're right on the cutting edge of the most amazing discoveries, which maybe only in heaven are we going to get the, the real expose of what that's about. But when you talk about being able to express through certain switches in, by certain choices we make, I mean, it makes some of the things we used to say about Ellen White, you know, people would poo-poo some of the things she said, and then all of a sudden you start saying, oh, well, maybe she was a little ahead of her time. All right, let's Absolutely. The modern science is truly validating the things that we were told um, over 100 years ago. Of course, I think many people know, for example, there was a physician who was advanced in his field of immunology, and he was shown statements from Ellen White about diet that led him to become a Seventh-day Adventist. He was medical director at Weimar for quite some time. Um, you can read more about that. I won't mention names. I don't have his permission. But uh, yes, the things that we were shown long time ago were, were way ahead of their time. And we ought to be studying, in my opinion, we should be studying these things more scientifically. Imagine what we could show the world if we would study the basis for some of these councils. Yeah, the Bible says we can be the head and not the tail. So let's go back to it. You know, it used to be that being a vegetarian was kind of wacky. Vegetarians have been left in the dust by vegans now. All right, I want everybody to think about it. All right, let's keep going on the slideshow. All right. Um, Pastor Michael was giving a lecture to the guests downstairs. We literally had every room downstairs being used, some much more than others, but they were all used for some designated purpose. We had downstairs, this is the youth room where Pastor Michael's teaching right now. Literally, uh, it was a little, little hospital almost. We had teaching demonstrations. If a lot of people are frustrated, they want to eat healthier, but they don't know how to do it. So we had some very, very tasty meals prepared in front of the guests. And that gives a lot of courage when you don't know what to do. Now this is everyone exercising. Dr. Kim Ferreira, she came from Andrews, and she's, she's been waiting for something like this to happen. And she didn't just come by herself. She brought different students every night to take the guests, guests through some helpful exercises. So there was a lot of different people involved in this program. And then we had treatments. Linda Pellandini, she's not here today. But everyone, this is where a lot of relief comes from. You would think some charcoal. Well, that's just some dead wood. What can that do? Well, that is one of the major things, so simple, that can take pain away. Charcoal. That's the dead wood you talked about in the beginning. Burnt wood. Okay, burnt wood. <laughs> that's what you call it. But God can do great things with nothing. That's how awesome he is. And we wouldn't have done this without our helpers downstairs, Louis Dale and Mark and many other people. Angela Pulley, she came from Heartland to see how this was run. Her goal is to do this at another church. And there's one of our trainees, you all know, Stephen. This is the transformation of downstairs and how beautiful they were turned into nice rooms. And I, I think you would love to be treated there, if anyone's wondering. These are some of the gentlemen that came also wanting to take this program back to their church. And you'll see uh, this is kind of the progress of a treatment. So all sorts of different treatments. I mean, there's foundational treatments, and then they grow from there. What was happening here, Pastor Ron? Looks to me like a Russian steam bath. And then who's learning? Looks to me like the Pathfinders are. Actually, I was there. And uh, I see myself in the picture. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate the uh, immersion team taking time because a couple Sundays ago, we went over hot and cold treatment. This ended up being a hot foot bath. We didn't make it all the way to the Russian steam bath. But um, the Pathfinders were taught a little bit about this uh, burnt wood and about these uh, hot and cold, uh, these contrast treatments. And they paid good attention. Thank you. And they did have a good time. So start to finish, this is full therapy. We check your temperature, take your blood pressure, and then we set you up to get a nice warm treatment. <laughs> now some people will bring out good, I mean, really harsh words, such as someone's getting boiled or steamed, but it's like a cozy, a cozy nap in a really warm bed. That's, that's what I think you should think of it as. And then prayer. So again, more treatments. 
And then uh, we did have a little bit of a celebration. We mixed together the trainees. Oh, we have one of these persons. Why don't we take a moment and transition, I think, to the people who actually experienced this change themselves, if we want to hear. Right, who are we going to first? Go. Well, who's on the screen there? Karen, right, tell like us a little Karen. bit about your experience. Um, well, I had started the program last November, and mainly because I did not, I, my cholesterol was like 264 or something, and I did not want to get on medication. And I knew, I knew this, would, this would help immensely. So, of course, that program, unfortunately, was, had to stop because of COVID, and Dr. Kelly even had COVID. Um, but I went ahead and we learned, it, w it was like four days that we were there, and I learned more about vegan eating. And I mean, I, we all know as Seventh-day Adventists what veganism is, but, you know, the way Mrs. Kelly, well, she was able to be there first couple days, and she got COVID also, but it was very good, very good. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try to do as much vegan eating as I could, and I honestly did 95%. Um, of vegan eating, and it wasn't bad at all. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. So I had no idea what my cholesterol uh, was, um, but I thought, I'm going to go back to the program uh, when they have it here in the spring. And my cholesterol, the first day that we were, well, we get there Sunday, then you get your blood to work on Monday morning. It went down 40 points, and my triglycerides went down 40, so I was at you know, 330s in the 330s, 320s. So I was very, very, very happy, um, as you can imagine. Um, but there's a number there that is, it's the cardiac reactive protein, and that has to do with inflammation. And I was at the, the severe level of to get a stroke or heart attack. Even though my numbers went down, they, it takes a wide variety of, of things into and to play when it calculates that. And so I was almost at five. And Dr. Kelly was just telling me that um, you, if you could get below one, that's great, but one to three is okay, and then above that, of course, is not, not good. So that's my number I was most concerned about. So when we had um, the second blood work and the results came in, my number went down three, so I was actually in the normal range, and I went from severe to um, the next level down of possibly of the stroke. Then there's one more down, which would be the normal, but I was very happy. Um, one thing I just will tell you, the people were amazing. The, the trainees, the trainers, I mean, they have medical doctors, Dr. Kelly, Dr. Kobos, and there were a couple others that came when you were tested through the, you know, through the time. Uh, just amazing, wonderful people, and extremely professional, extremely well knowledged in this area. So if you can have the time and you feel the need, I totally encourage you to experience this and get healthy. All right, and I think it might be good to hear from Dr. Kelly a little bit about this, uh, this last measure of health. We often focus on cholesterol and triglycerides, but talk to us a little bit about what Karen was mentioning. Yeah, so um, the LDL cholesterol is often considered one of the primary risk factors for your risk of atherosclerosis, heart disease, and stroke. But there's another measure, the C-reactive protein, um, that is an equally um, strong uh, indicator are, it's equally associated with the risk of heart disease and so forth. So we're measuring that as well. And yes, she, uh, she had great results. You know, however, I just happened to have uh, on my phone a list and the, uh, someone actually dropped their C-reactive protein 13 and a half points. 13 and a half points. <laughs> so yes, so, and we also had uh, someone that dropped their blood sugar 57 points and their cholesterol 48. So anyway, it, 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 uh, she had great results, but there were many others that, that had similar changes. And uh, because we had to shorten the program one day, these were almost, actually only one week apart. These are, this is changes that happen in blood tests in one week. Uh, I'm just amazed. I would never have thought this was possible, but I truly believe that God is able to honor this program, these methods, when done in his, to his name and glory in ways that he cannot just, when you're just doing it in the office. 
I may be wrong, but that's what I think. Well, I suspect you're right because I don't think this uh, sense of being touched by Jesus can be easily measured medically or empirically. So we don't know what the power of the living presence of Christ in the midst of a ministry is, except that we believe it's here. All right? Let's just wind this down. There's a few more pictures here. I might need help advancing that. Oh, so there's Pastor Michael, the program director. This is again at our celebration. Thank you. Dr. Kelly, Dr. Kobos came up from Tennessee. He is also a great resource. Now this, this program is comprehensive in its education. Dr. Kelly didn't want to just train people to do the therapies. He wants to train other doctors so that they can also help in these programs. We want to train other administrators so they can help run these programs in their churches. So keep these things in mind when you're thinking about the next program. Pastor Kelly gave us some inspiration at the end because when a program ends, you need God's help to carry you through. Linda Pellandini was our treatment coordinator. There's Dr. Kim Carrera. She was leading out in the physical therapy. And then we passed out a few certificates, a few gifts to help people on their way home. This is another one of our, some of our trainees that finished that want to take health back to their churches. They're already doing it, but they would like to do that in an extra special way. And this is our group of trainees that came. We had 12. And then this is the trainees and the guests together. So it was a blessed time together. And maybe really quick, Vicki Kudanen, she was one of the trainees for the inaugural program. And then this time, she was one of our leader help therapists. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience there? Oh, yes. It was a great experience. I had uh, some just a small bit of experience um, before I went to the training, which really interested, made me interested in coming to the training to get a really comprehensive understanding. And it really did do that for us. It was the inaugural program, so we were, were working through some things, and I think that we have um, made it even better this time. So it was just a wonderful then, and it's even better now. And what I really appreciate is that we um, had that training, I think it was in February of 21, and then in November, a whole lot of people in our community got sick, and those of us that had known about it and were trained were able to go out and help people in the community, people in our church, as well as our own family members. And um, uh, recently, I went to Arizona. My mom had had a stroke, and she said, okay, I'm ready for a change. So I went there, and I helped her with some, some healthy meals, and uh, um, my, my um, stepdad also had some problems, some diabetes. And uh, so I was helping with some healthy, healthy meals there, and in just two weeks, he went from 20 units of insulin down to 14. So it really does work. So we can help people learn, and we can help with those people around us that really need help. This is a wonderful ministry. And Jim, you are the last person. You were actually in the program. We don't have a lot of time, but give us a brief assessment of how that went for you. I came into this program kicking and screaming, okay? So there's was, hope for others that might not want to come. <laughs> there's hope for others, hope for you. Um, one of our dear sisters registered me for coming into this program, and another one was supportive, and they said, Jim, you gotta do this. I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah. Well, back in, back in like February, I had a calcium scan because I have a heart problem. You know, I've got four stints in my heart. I, I, and I'm trying to wean myself, get off of my statins. That's a big problem, I want, I want off. Um, so I came to the program, and here's some of the quick stats for me, okay? I was from taking my glucose, with my glucose meter from like January to before the program started. I was 75% in the red with my glucose throughout the day. After the end of the program, I, and during the program, I took my glucose, I am now 75% in the green. Praise the Lord. So that, that's a big one, okay? When I had the calcium scan, my C-reactive protein was like 
uh, 3.02, and that, that's already in the bad area, and that scared me to death because, like um, Karen talked about, that's inflammation. And some of the drivers for, you know, heart problems are the cholesterol, yes, but also at the same time it is this, the inflammation, which that's what C-reactive protein, as Karen said, measures. So I had, I had that done. Now, it went, it went up. It was 2.7 when I had the calcium scan. When we started the program, is 3.02, and right away, that's the borderline for your bad. When I got done with the program and had it remeasured, it was like 1.41. Praise the Lord. That's great. And praise the Lord, I'm down. I had bad acid reflux all the time. Gone. I mean, I've been living on, you know, Pepsid AC and a Meprazole, gone. My weight, I've lost 11 pounds. Amen. My cholesterol, total cholesterol has dropped by 50%. My triglycerides have dropped by 50%. Amen. Now, I want to thank my two good friends that just came in here, giving me my treatments, John and Samuel. These are my best buds now. Well, that's the These extra guys, blessings. I really did a good job, and I'm so grateful for their being here and their encouragement and support, and we had a blessed time together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for sharing that testimony. So I want to build especially on what has been shared up here. Number one, if you need the program, we want to invite you to come. It's an amazing program. It'll bless you with a whole new network of friends, a lot of encouragement, spiritual growth, as well as medical and health benefits. If you've been through the program, we invite you to come back as a volunteer and build on what you've got, because I think one of the things we're up against is this. We are blessed here to have Dr. Kelly, who is the founding president of the Lifestyle, College of Lifestyle Medicine. That's good. But what we're looking to do is really grow the confidence level of more and more people to where they can go out and do this. Dr. Kelly could retire and enjoy himself along with his wife, Sally. Both of them could retire. But in their retirement, they're serving. Amen. And the goal is to train and educate. And um, so that date, October 19 and November 4. Uh, the other thing is, uh, my sister came to the first one. She's a nurse. Jim's a retired engineer. My sister came to this first program, and she took the program home, and she... Uh, put my mother on it. Over the last year, my mother's lost 50 pounds and um, gone through some tough stuff, but she has been very thankful, and she just got the residual benefit. But in effect, that's John, Dr. Kelly's goal, is that people will come here and export it out. Now, last thing I want to say, if you're a pastor listening to me, I'd like to invite you to come for the last four or five days of this program. We're developing a syllabus uh, for how to put these programs on. Don't want to make it complex, doesn't need to be. But we're looking to build teams of people. It takes a team of people to do this. And the pastor, along with a medical person and maybe someone else that has a burden for health education, two or three people. So I'm encouraging you, if you're listening, pastors or other lay members, invite your pastor to come for the last part of this program in the fall you come, if you get your pastor to come, we'll seriously discount your rate to do this. And uh, we want to send teams out of here of people that are motivated to go back into their churches and start this program smaller than at Village. It'll have to be because this is a larger church with more resources, but it's doable. The same results will come, especially if we bathe it in the Holy Spirit, work together in humility and prayer, and use the age-old, what are now becoming the new cutting-edge methods that take advantage of our great God who's an amazing designer so that the body can recover. So I'm rejoicing in the results. I'm rejoicing in the joy. And for the little hiccups you have along the way, praise the Lord, he helps us through those as well. All right, Dr. Kelly, I think I might give you the last word as we round out this segment. Well, thank you. I was just thinking while you were speaking, I wish I would have told the, the group, talking about the cutting-edge, it turns out that re current recent research since COVID came on, since the pandemic, we have now scientific proof that a hydrothermal therapy, in other words, raising the body temperature, strengthens the innate immune system, which is the very part of your immune system that fights off COVID and keeps you from having to go to the hospital. 
The evidence is that if your innate immune system is, is weakened by the virus, you are very likely to have the inflammatory response and need to go to the hospital. But if uh, uh, you can somehow help your innate immune system fight off the virus in the first few days, you do not have that experience. So it's just wonderful to see that something as old as, as a, a century or more, hydrothermal therapy, which was used, by the way, in the Spanish flu pandemic with great success, is effective with the current scourge uh, affecting the world. So I just feel it's a privilege to be alive at this time. I think we've come to the, to the work of Christianity, the, the ministry of Christ at this time for a purpose, friends. Yeah, what an exciting opportunity. So it's time for the Seventh-day Adventist Church to come back to life in regards to health ministries, be the head and not the tail, rediscover what many knew about with this added benefit of physiological science that's revealing to us what we used to take by faith through the inspired writings and the practices of people like Kellogg. All right, uh, Brother Rob, if you'll have a benediction prayer for us and anything you'd like to say to close us out. Lord, thank you so much that we have these testimonies that come from a good God providing the knowledge, providing the labor, providing the results. All glory be to you. Lord, I pray that everyone would embrace this message in the church, for it will strengthen the church, and it will strengthen their outreach efforts, and it will increase your kingdom if we have your spirit about us. It says, bless us in this way. Anyone who's listening here and curious about the program, help them to reach out and to move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, for his kingdom, amen. Amen. And again, that's October 19. If you're interested, call and save your spot. We look forward to a wonderful experience, and we sure hope you'll join with a pastor. God bless you. We're going to transition now. Thank you, team. Thank you, volunteers, everyone that participated in putting this uh, program on. Deep 